Time for Ask Annex. As always, you get a question, you head to our website, AnnexWealth.com. You look for the Ask tab. I'm Danny Clayton in the studio with Matt Morsey, Investment Team Manager, also a CFP. Welcome. Hey, Danny. Fred Coleman is a CFP and a Wealth Manager at Annex Wealth Management. Welcome to you. Hey, Danny. I've got to point out, this is a multimedia presentation now because we're doing a video version of this as well. So if you're only listening to the radio, let us describe ourselves. The three of us are at least 6'3", six, 6'4", six, <laughs> long flowing hair. I've always thought you, you know, you were being hidden behind the microphone. Uh, first question on Ask Annex today. My wife and I each bought $10,000 in I-bonds in December of 2021 and another 10000 each in March of 2022. Is it time to cash out now that the rates are lower? If we cash out, we probably will throw the funds into our HYSA. Any input is appreciated. Yeah, it, it seems like it was just yesterday when those I-bonds were popping and, you know, it was well mm -hmm. above 7% back in 2021 when you bought them. Um, but then they even went up towards 9 because, you know, they're tied to inflation. And now they're, you know, they've announced that it's going to be around 4%. So they're not as attractive. One thing that I tell people to always keep in mind is because you've held it for less than five years, uh, you'll lose three months mm -hmm. in interest. So you need to ensure that you've held it for that full six-month period. Um, and that may require you holding it for an additional three months to make sure you get that higher interest rate. The other thing to consider with I-bonds, they're not taxed at the state mm -hmm. level, right? And and Matt's your investment team does a good job with this, but you always tell us what the tax equivalent yield is when comparing the different options. So you do get some tax savings when you invest in those I-bonds, but overall I do think it's a good time to look at alternatives. So depending on what the high yield savings account is paying, that could be a good option. Uh, Annex also has other cash equivalents such as money markets, uh, looking at CDs, treasuries, all those things. Uh, but now is the time to look at other options. Yeah, I think you made some really good points there. I would certainly be doing the math on what yield are you expecting to get in the future versus what you're able to get now and another you know instrument like a money market, like you said. You know, also look at you know what your tax equivalent yield is depending on what your marginal tax rate is going to make a difference in terms of where you stand and where you sit there, uh, knowing that you're going to be exempt from the state and local taxes. That's not the biggest thing in the world, but something you certainly want to calculate and see where you go. You know, also just look at too. You know, if there's not a a large difference in what that end dollar amount is you know it's might not be worth the time to, to move that out for now and just to see how things go knowing that there are maximums that you can put back into it you know if we get a spot where inflation starts to go back up again those rates start to go you're gonna be limited to what you put back in and you might find yourself in a worse situation so i would just kind of do the math on it really come there and then look at those high yield savings accounts money markets maybe that's a spot for another you know section of cash that you have right now today but knowing in the future you could always add more Next up on Ask Annex, looking to buy a home, and I qualify as a first-time home buyer. When reading up on withdrawing money, it looks like I was able to take up to $10,000 on my Roth 401k and $10,000 on my Roth IRA for the home. I'm just confirming this and making sure it's not 10k total from both. Yeah, great question. The thing to keep in mind is those are completely separate. The Roth 401k and the Roth IRA, those are two totally separate instruments. For Roth IRA contributions, Regardless of when you put the contributions in, you can take those out and you're not going to be taxed again on those. The earnings portion of Roth, they have that five year rule, 59 and a half years old. Um, and then with the Roth 401k, you want to contact the 401k plan administrator to get the exact amount that you're eligible to take out. But it also depends on how much you have vested if you have matches. Um, usually they offer some type of loan or hardship type withdrawal for a down payment. But before pulling that trigger, you want to make sure you evaluate all investment options because taking $10,000 out of your retirement can really affect how much you have in the long run. So there is an opportunity cost. Final question on Ask Annex. When diversifying my entire portfolio, should I include each child's 529? Or should I see that as more of their portfolio and not mine? Yeah, good question. Again, you know, when I look at types of things like that, I tend to bucket them out in my mind. I would also do this with this as well, too. 
knowing that the 529 are specifically for your child's higher education, I would think of it specifically in that way when you look at the allocation. Really more from a standpoint of how old is that child, and we've done some of these 529 questions in the past, of how old is that child and how much risk do you want to take with that set of money based on how many more years they have till college. If you look at this as part of your full portfolio, you might end up being on the wrong side of that, where maybe you're not taking enough risk somewhere else in a portfolio, so you take more here to try to even that out, but that child's 17 and they're going to need the money soon. You know, could be the exact opposite where um, you're not taking enough risk in the 529 because in your Roth IRA, you're all equities. And so you try to scale that back. So again, that math isn't going to work out. So I would keep this fully separate from each other based off the kid, how old they are, how much, you know, how important is this bucket of money going to be for their college? I would focus really on that when it came to that allocation. The only thing to keep in mind when it comes to the financial planning aspect is if you do need to take money out of the other investments, just the cash flow aspect of it. So like Matt said, you know, as far as the investment and risk tolerance, those should be totally separate. Um, But if you do need to do some cash flow planning, it can be included in your overall financial plan. Fred Coleman's a CFP and a wealth manager at Annex Wealth Management. Thanks. Thanks, Danny. Matt Morrissey, CFP, investment team manager. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you.